Hi, welcome back to biology. My name is Mr. Kabuski. Uh, today we'll be uh, continuing on talking about unit one. Uh, last time we talked about scientific method. Uh, today we're going to talk about the characteristics of life. So we're actually going to get to talk about some real biology. Uh, so which is exciting. Uh, we're also going to talk about uh, the characteristics and how they connect. Uh, so we'll talk about that. It should not take us too long. This will be kind of brief notes, which is always good. Okay, so what is biology? Well, obviously the word biology comes from the two parts of the word bio, the prefix, which means life. Hashtag bio is life. And logi, or ology, which obviously we know by now means study of because of all the other classes you're taking that end in that phrase. Okay, so biology, study of life. Good enough. Okay, keep in mind that biology is a part of science. There are a couple different branches of science, but science is just like the search for answers. I mean, that's really what it is. We want to understand the world around us. Uh, that's kind of the mission or goal of science, and, and that's kind of where that all comes from. Okay, so what are the properties and themes of biology, and what are the properties of life that go along with that? So these are the things that are going to be what we consider to be alive, they have to fit into all eight of these categories, okay? Now, there's some kind of exceptions we'll talk a little bit about, but when, the reason there's exceptions is when we think of life, we don't want to think about it, one individual being alive. We want to think about a species or a group of animals or all living things, really, uh, and, that, and for that matter, okay, being considered alive. And I'll show you what I mean when we get to that point. So the first thing that all living things have in common is that they are made up of cells, okay? Uh, there are three things you need to know about cells uh, and how they relate to living things is that cells are the basic unit of structure and function of all living things. So basically they're like Lego blocks for life. Uh, all living things are made up of cells, even uh, just single-celled organisms. I mean, they still are made up of that one cell. And then all cells come from pre-existing cells. They're not just created in a lab. You can't just sprinkle pixie dust and they magically appear. Okay, they can only come from other cells, which begs the question, well, where did the first one come from? We will talk about that, or if you want to jump ahead, go get into evolution and the origins of life. Next, reproduction. Okay, living things have to make more of their own kind in order to be considered alive. Now, Again, exception to the rule, okay? We're talking about species, not necessarily an individual. For example, ligers. Ligers are a combination of a lion and a tiger, okay? If it's the other way around, if it's a male tiger and a female lion, then it's a tigon, besides the point, okay? But the reason that's important is that ligers are sterile, which means they cannot reproduce. So does that mean that they can't make more of their own kind? Does that mean they're not technically alive? No, I mean, they're alive, obviously. They have a heartbeat, they're moving. You can see that they're alive. Okay, but we're talking about their species, the species of ligers. Ligers are not like an actual species. They're like a subspecies because lions and tigers used to be the same thing and they share enough DNA that they can still reproduce, but that reproduction makes uh, that organism sterile. Okay, Again, more talked about that when we get to uh, evolution and we get to reproduction later on in semester two. If you have questions, please feel free to contact me over here. All right, next. Metabolism and energy. Uh, have you ever heard anyone say, hey, you have a high metabolism? That's why you're so skinny, or that's why you're, you know, whatever. Metabolism actually refers to the sum of all the chemical reactions in the body. Breathing, eating, going to the bathroom, okay? Uh, all these things that occur inside your body, I guess going to the bathroom occurs outside, but besides the point, okay? Any chemical reaction inside your body is a part of your metabolism. Now, the more chemical reactions you do and the rate at which you do them in can give you a higher metabolism, which people equate to being able to lose weight or having a smaller physique and things like that, okay? But really, it means how quickly you burn through energy and make energy. Now, obviously, if you are younger, and my guess is if you're watching this video, you're probably a biology student, and you are, you're still growing and developing, which means you have a higher metabolism because your body's doing lots of chemical reactions to produce and use that energy to make you into the mature adult that you soon will be. Okay? A guy like myself here at 32 years old, my metabolism is starting to slow down because I'm no longer growing and maturing. I'm already well mature enough, right? Yeah, right. Okay, anyways, moving on. Homeostasis, okay? Homeostasis means maintaining internal balance in spite of changing external conditions. Okay? It's the reason when you go outside and it's cold, you shiver, or when you go outside and it's hot, you sweat. It's the reason that you have to go to the bathroom right now as you're sitting here and want me to finish up talking about this, okay? Homeostasis means our internal conditions. There's certain levels that we want to be at, okay? And if we get out of those levels, our body is going to correct itself and get us back to those levels. Since we are thermoregulators, or what we refer to as warm-blooded, okay, that means we have to control our body temperature, either by shivering, shaking the muscle, or moving the muscles in order to produce heat, or by sweating to cool the surface of the skin down to cool off the blood that's pumping through your body. Okay? That is a type of homeostasis. Okay? If I drink too much Diet Coke, which I happen to do sometimes, I usually have to go to the bathroom a lot because I have lots of distilled water running through my body, and I need to get rid of that extra water. Okay? Different topic. I know I shouldn't do it, but anyways. Okay. 
Next, DNA heredity. Obviously, if you're taking this course right now, you probably don't know a ton about DNA and heredity. Maybe you know a little bit. That's good. Okay, but what you need to know right now is that DNA is our mechanism for passing on our traits from parents to offsprings. It's the DNA is the code that makes you who you are. It makes you look the way that you do, makes you be the color that you are, the height that you are, uh, make a long tongue, short tongue, wide nose, skinny nose, you know, everything about you is controlled by your DNA, okay? And you get that DNA from your parents. It has to be passed on, okay? But you cannot be considered a living thing without DNA. Kind of important. Next. Oh, I'm sorry. Responding to your environment or interdependence. This is kind of a tricky one, okay? Because it's like two ideas combined into one. Responding to the environment means you respond to stimulus, okay? When it's bright outside, I tend to squint a lot like this. People say, hey, when I smile, they can't see my eyes. Besides the point. But what it means is that my body is responding to a stimulus. The stimulus being the sunlight, it's reacting to it. You know, my pupils will, will squeeze, you know, so I'd let less sunlight in. Um, you know, I squint to kind of protect it. You know, that's what my eyebrows and eyelashes are for to kind of protect some of the sunlight and keep it out of my eyes. So that's a response. Uh, sometimes, for some of you, not me because I'm pale, if you go outside in the sun very often, you start to get tan. It's your body's reaction to a stimulus. Stimulus, again, is sunlight, you know, hitting your skin. Your body's trying to protect itself. If you want to know more about that, uh, make sure you look into uh, my section on mitosis and cancer. Okay. A um, couple of other things, you know, when you're hungry, you eat. And what do you eat? You end up eating plants or animals. So you are dependent on those plants and animals in order to survive. Every living thing on the planet has to depend on something else in order to survive. We depend on plants not just for food, but we depend on them for oxygen. And they vice versa depend on us for carbon dioxide. So everything is interconnected. We are all connected. This shark in this picture, okay, he's dependent on the seals. And believe it or not, the seals are kind of dependent on him because without the sharks, the seal population would get too big. They would overcrowd and overeat. And all of a sudden, they would have no food because they ate too much of it for it to reproduce. And all of a sudden, the seal population is gone. So believe it or not, even the prey is dependent on the predators in some way. We're all interconnected. So interdependence, and the other important word there is stimulus, reacting to stimuli. Next, growth and development, getting larger and maturing. Okay, you get bigger by adding cells. Your cells don't get bigger. You just add more of them. That's how you went from one single cell to the trillions of cells that you are today. Okay, but uh, not only do you grow, but you also develop. Okay, so like you'd say, well, how does a single-celled organism, that doesn't really grow. Well, technically, the cell does get a little bit bigger over time uh, after its birth, quote-unquote. Uh, but it does develop. It matures. It becomes an adult. Now, it does it at a more rapid pace than you and I. Okay, but when I say maturing, I mean like becoming an adult scientifically, not an adult like, oh, you're so mature, you can handle these topics. No, no that's not what I mean. Okay, so growth and development is another uh, characteristic of life. Last one, evolution means the ability to change a species. Again, not an individual, but a species over time. Again, a, a lot of people will say, well, I don't need evolution to be alive myself. Well, no, but you wouldn't be here and be alive without evolution. You know, evolution is the idea that things change over time. I mean, if you think about it, 3.5 billion years ago, the only thing on the planet was one single solitary cell. And now look at this place. It's crazy. All the plants and animals and people are around here. Okay, We couldn't be here without evolution. Okay? And again, we'll talk way more about that when we get to that section later on in semester two. But we need evolution in order to drive uh, our, our living things uh, because things have to be able to change. And the only constant, as they say, is change. All right, now... Here's why those characteristics are important. Not only is it important to figure out what's alive, because obviously hashtag bio is life. Uh, we need to know the things that are alive. But every living thing, you know, we talk about how they're connected, but even these characteristics are connected. For example, cells and metabolism. Cells have an organelle called a mitochondria in them okay, that is used to make energy. It performs cellular respiration, which is what you and I use for energy. It converts the food energy into energy your body can use, ATP. So there, right there, is a connection between two characteristics of life, energy Okay, metabolism, I'm sorry, and cells, okay? So those are interconnected. You could talk about some other ones, okay? Uh, evolution in DNA, okay? DNA has to change or mutate, and sometimes those mutations uh, lead to changes in a species, and if they're beneficial, then they evolve over time, okay? So there's another connection, okay? So what I'd like you to do now is go through all the different characteristics of life and see if you can make connections. There should be about, like, I think 28, and I've already given you two, but see if you can come up with the rest of them. In the meantime, I look forward to talking with you again. Hope you learned something today. Go back and reflect. It's always good to think about what you've learned and talk about it with somebody, uh, not just put this YouTube video away and think, wow, that guy's awesome, which I know you probably are doing. But otherwise, if you have questions, please feel free to contact me. I'm always available over here. Come visit us at Cathedral High School. It's a great place to be. Otherwise, have a great day.